Let's mess around now with the period of the sinusoidal function. Oh, what do I mean by this? Well, think about it. If the amplitude was a vertical stretch, the period now is a horizontal stretch. And guess what? If it's horizontal stretch, we're talking about the y-axis. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what happens then? Remember, in a sine function, you start here, you go up to here, you go down to here, and this all happens within 2 pi, right? Okay, so what happens when we horizontally stretch something? Well, let's think about this then. It doesn't happen within 2 pi. Let's ha say it happens within, oh, I don't know, let's say it happens within 4 pi. What does this mean? That means our entire thing is now stretched across 4 pi. So this will be up, it'll be down, and it'll be over. Oh my goodness, that much. You still have to have one complete cycle, but now you have more room to do it in. Ah, but what if it's stretched and like made smaller? Well, guess what? If it's made smaller, it's made down to here, which we know is pi. You still have to have a crest, goes up to the same height, the same trough, because now if you think about it, we have not dealt with the amplitude. The amplitude stays the same now. It's completing the cycle in either less space, normal space, which is 2 pi, or extended space, which would be things like 4 pi. How do you figure this out? It's actually kind of easy. Because it is a horizontal stretch, it has to be within the function. There it is. There's your B value within the function. And just like before, that B value, ha, 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 remember, you got to flip it. Oh, no. Oh, yes. How do you figure it out? It's very simple. The period based on whether you're talking radians or you're talking degrees. If you're talking radians, then you would have to divide everything by the B value. Look, so in radians, 2 pi over the B value will give you the period. Oh my goodness, how about if we're talking degrees? Okay, 360 degrees, because you know this cycle from here to here is not only 2 pi, but in degrees, that's 360 degrees. Okay, so 360 degrees then, there it is, there's the flip. Divide by B and there's your period. Oh my goodness. So that value here determines the period of the function. Now, here's something really, really important. When we start talking about tangents, which is gonna be about five or six podcasts from now, tangent is a little bit different. Tangent actually cycles every 180 degrees, not 360 degrees, which means it cycles every pi. Ah, okay. So it's still as before. He's still divided by the B value. There's the B. Now, remember, and you've probably seen this already, but what's important to realize that these are absolute values of B. Why? Because if you put in a negative value here, we're now dealing with a... You got it, horizontal reflection. One thing at a time. Don't try to jump, that's too much. Check it out. For example, let's look at some simple examples here and then I'll show you how to do this graphically in the next podcast. Look, there's the B value of two, okay? Now, if it's a value of two, remember what you have to do, okay? If it's in radians, divide by two, two pi divided by two. Or if it's in degrees, it'd be 360 divided by two. Check it out. This would have a 180 degree period. So in 180 degrees, this guy would have to do one complete up trough or up crest and bottom trough in the 180 degrees. Simple. That cancels out, means that this is done in pi radians. What happens if it's a third? Well, if it's a third, so what? So what? Just throw it in there. Same thing as before. This would be two pi divided by a third. Oh, let's put this under radians though. 2 pi divided by a third, which you know is the same as saying 2 pi divided by a third according to grade 7 fractions. This would be 2 pi times the reciprocal would be 3 over 1. This would happen in 6 pi radians. Oh my goodness. That's huge. That's stretching it out very, very wide, isn't it? Hmm, interesting. But how about in terms of degrees? Well, that's simple enough to do as well. Think about this. This one-third would mean, again, this would be 360 degrees divided by one-third, 
which would be the same as saying 360 degrees times 3 over 1, which we know works out to be 1080. Perfect. Okay, look at tangent. Tangent, watch out. Remember, tangent is over pi or 180. Watch out for that. So again, in degrees, this would be 180 degrees divided by 3, which would be 60 degrees, okay? Or pi divided by 3, so it would have to do this over pi over 3 radians. Oh, my goodness. Now, a couple things to remember also here is this. <gasps> Look at that. Now let's talk about the reflections. Yes, so if we're a positive V, we're horizontally stretched by a factor of 1 over B, Okay, if we're a negative B, don't forget to reflect it. Okay, and then horizontally stretch everything. But take a, boat, take a look at the mapping. Isn't this mapping now X, Y become exactly the same mapping we had in polynomials? X over B comma Y? Of course it is. Of course, right? Now, don't forget, this is where it gets everybody. Just divide it by the factor of B, all right? That's the important part. That's the crucial part. When we get into the next podcast, I'm going to show you how to do this graphically.